Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Schnellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the previous videos, we talked about Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes tuberculosis. Today, we'll talk about Mycobacterium leprae, which causes leprosy. There are two types of leprosy. There is tuberculoid leprosy, and there is lepromatous leprosy, which is kind of redundant, just like heterophis heterophis, Loa Loa and Trichorius Trichoria. Who named these things? Quote, leprosy was first described in 600 BC and was recognized in the ancient civilization of China, Egypt, and India. Currently, 90% of cases of leprosy are in Brazil, Madagascar, Mozambique, Tanzania, and Nepal. Over the last 100 years, the incidence of leprosy has declined a lot which is great. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order, not chaos. Otherwise, you become morally reprehensible, you know? You might say, oh, well, Pedagosis, it doesn't matter the order that I watch them, as long as I watch them at all. That's wrong, man. Mycobacteria, including Mycobacterium leprae, is an immotile, aerobic, non-spore-forming, gram-positive rod. Does it stain well with gram stain? Ah, uh, no. Why do we call them Mycobacteria? Because they have mycolic acid in the cell wall. Mycobacteria, including Mycobacterium leprae, have long-chain mycolic acid in the cell wall, by long chain, I mean 70 to 90 carbons. And because they have long chain mycolic acid, therefore they are strongly acid fast, i.e. acid resistant, i.e. resistant to decolorization with acid solutions. Mycobacterium leprae causes leprosy. Leprosy, also known as Hansen disease, named after the doofus who discovered it. Hey, medicosis, he was not a doofus. He was a good scientist. Have some respect for yourself. Yes, ma'am. We have two types. We have tuberculoid leprosy versus lepromatous leprosy. In tuberculoid leprosy, it is similar to tuberculosis. What do you mean? We have a granuloma. How come? Because we have strong T-cell, cell-mediated immunity, which causes the granuloma. That's why we call it tuberculoid. Your immunity is strong and you have been infected by a few bacteria. Few bacteria, ergo, posse bacillary Hansen disease is the other name. What does posse mean? Few, do you remember my video on rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis? It had many patterns. There was the linear pattern, such as good pasture syndrome. There was the granular pattern, such as lupus and post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. And there was what? What was the third one? Posse immune rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, which included granulomatosis with polyangiitis, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, and microscopic polyangiitis. The moral of the story is the word posse means few. What's the opposite of posse? Multi bacillary Hansen disease. Many bacilli, many mycobacterium leprae. Many bacteria, but your immunity is weak, and that's why the disease is more severe and more infectious. Let's dig deeper. Between tuberculoid leprosy and lepromatous leprosy, which one do you think will have a granuloma? Well, let's think about it. When you have strong T lymphocyte immunity, of course, you will activate your macrophages. They become epithelioid histiocytes and they help you make a granuloma. But when I have an abhorrent immunity, I do not have any tools to make a granuloma, nor will I be able to stimulate my macrophages to become epithelioid cells. It's not gonna happen. Between tuberculoid and lepromatous leprosy, which one do you think is more infectious? Since lepromatous leprosy has more bacteria, it is more infectious. Duh! Which type has the granuloma? Tuberculoid leprosy. Tuberculoid, like tuberculosis. Speaking of granuloma, what kind of hypersensitivity is this? It's type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. It is delayed. It takes time, 2 to 3 days. I need to activate my T lymphocytes. Then the T lymphocytes will secrete interferon gamma to activate the macrophages to become epithelioid cells to surround the freaking mycobacterium leprae to make a granuloma. Let's do it again. In type 4 hypersensitivity, the T lymphocytes get active. They secrete interleukin 2 to activate themselves more and more and more. The macrophages will help them become active by secreting interleukin 12. And then the T helper cells will return the favor to the macrophages by secreting interferon gamma 
to activate the macrophages. If the organism is weak, we will phagocytose and destroy it. But if the organism is strong, like Mycobacterium tuberculosis or Mycobacterium leprae, we cannot kill it. We can at least imprison it and surround it in a granuloma. In cases of tuberculosis, the granuloma is known as a tubercle. Here's a granuloma, here's the freaking bacillus in the middle, that's the bacteria, surrounded by my epithelioid cells, which are uh, macrophages in the tissue. Some of these macrophages will fuse together to give me the multinucleated or long Hans giant cells. Then you have the T helper cells, beautiful, they are CD4 positive, surrounded by some fibroblasts to lay down some uh, connective tissue. And don't forget plasma cells because this is a chronic inflammation. If you happen to cause caseous necrosis in the middle, it's called caseating granuloma. Otherwise, it's non-caseating granuloma. How can you tell the difference under the microscope? Look at the center of the granuloma. If you see nuclei, it means that these cells in the middle are not dead and it's not caseous necrosis. But if you see no nuclei in the middle, it means there are no cells alive in the middle, which means that caseating necrosis has happened and it is a caseous necrosis. So if you see nuclei, non-caseating. If you do not see nuclei, caseating. Case closed, just like the granuloma. Here's type 4 hypersensitivity reaction again. Please pause and review. Don't forget the test for tuberculosis is called tuberculin skin test. In leprosy, it is called lepremin skin test. Same concept. You inject the patient with the purified protein derivative, wait for 48 to 72 hours, and feel the induration. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? If you can, it's a positive test. If you cannot, it's a negative test. And as you know, the only place in the world where the word positive uh, means a bad thing is in the hospital. Mycobacterium leprae aerobic weekly gram stain. It is anatomically gram positive. If you want to stain it, look for the acid fast stain as we talked before with tuberculosis. Yes, mycobacteria sometimes can give us these thin filaments, but they are not as robust as nocardia. Remember, nocardia had elaborate branches up in the air called aerial hyphae. If you have watched my nocardia video, Mycobacterium leprae, mycolic acid, high lipid content. The purified protein is known as lepremin versus tuberculin in tuberculosis. Hey, Medicosis, uh, can I culture Mycobacterium leprae on artificial medium in the lab? No, you cannot. Uh, how about, uh, how can I see the bacteria then? You need living tissue, living human tissue. And what do you call that? A biopsy. How is leprosy transmitted person to person? What is the route of entry, inhalation or skin contact? And from this fact, you learn about the horrific stories in history about people refusing to touch a leper. What are the two types of the disease? Tuberculoid leprosy and lepromatous leprosy. Did you know that leprosy is endemic in armadillos? And this is a point from which leprosy can spread from animals to humans. Pause and review. Let's review some leprosy facts from Picmonic. What's the cause? Mycobacterium leprae. Myco, here's the myc. Leprae, here's the leopard. It's an aerobic organism playing aerobics. It's an acid fast bacillus. Here's a lemon running fast. Look at this acid fast stain. The organism appears pink on a blue background. Do not say, oh, it appears pink, therefore it's gram negative. Shut up. Mycobacterium leprae is gram positive, at least anatomically. Mycobacterium leprae likes cool temperatures. And we have two types of leprosy. We have tuberculoid leprosy with a positive granuloma, therefore a positive lepremin skin test, versus lepromatous leprosy with no granuloma and negative skin test. Which one has the granuloma? The answer, tuberculoid leprosy. Granuloma, granny lama. How can we treat leprosy? Well, it depends on what type do you have. If you have tuberculoid leprosy, we treat with rifampin, the referee, and dapsone, the diaper son. If you have lepromatous leprosy, the more severe form, you will need rifampin, you will need dapsone, and you will need clofazamine. 
If you want to learn more about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications, download my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have an endocrine pharmacology course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.